This is Night Force Action Report for Tuesday, August 27, 2013, from HorribleNight.com. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. With me this evening <laughs> is a sneeze-filled Ethan Moses. Hey, Justin, how are you? Doing better than your nose, I think. Oh, hey. yeah. He is yeah, the white Ray Charles. <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's why I'm wearing these, these, uh, these glasses. It's, it's helping my allergies, special allergy glasses. It's science. I won't argue with it. Uh, scientific. It's real scientific. Jason Thompson, how are you feeling? I'm doing all right. Better than Ethan. <laughs> Good. That's, our bar is low. <laughs> our bar is low. That's how we like to keep it on this podcast. So uh, We will eventually get to video games. Uh, but Ethan, you've been traveling quite a bit. No one knew where you were last week. You showed up in the middle of a Titan. What the hell were you doing? Um, well, I was at uh, Gamescom last week. Oh. Um, and uh, it was down in Cologne, which is about five hours away from me. And I was able to take a train trip, uh, which was a treat. Was that sarcasm? Um, uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that sounds a little bit more like it. There was a man in the front of the train saying choo-choo, and then he was he was asked to get off before we left. It was <laughs> really strange. He, was, he um, ruled a danger to others. Yeah, you know, actually, the uh, train trip on the way down, I'm going to take these off because I think my allergies are doing better now. The train trip down actually sucked because um, half the train had mechanical issues. So they came rolling up with half a train, and the half that my... <laughs> Uh, my seat was on the half that like was the left not side or the right station. side. Um, yeah, it was right down the middle. Yeah, which is like the, uh, no one knows how it happened. Lightning strike, but you know they had to keep going. Um, no, so I stood for two and a half hours right by the bathroom. <laughs> it was awful. It sucked. Um, but Cologne is absolutely lovely, and Gamescom was. Um, uh, you know, I'm glad I went on Media Day, and and I I, I I was actually planning on going for two days, but I met up with Coop. Oh gosh, um, yeah. On Wednesday, and so actually on on Thursday, he was um, I'm doing some stuff around town. I just kind of followed him around, and uh, I avoided Thursday because actually Gamescom hit a record this year and sold out all the weekend tickets. And I actually um, on my tram trip from my hotel um, to Gamescom because I was stopping by on my way through just to you know see what was going on. It was insane. It's um, packed. It was, yeah, it was packed. And Media Day was pretty packed, and I was surprised mm. about that because I thought Media Day meant media people go and they get to see the games and do the interviews they need to do. He when in actuality, goose. Media Day is, yeah, it was awful. Yeah, it was, it was, it was long, but it was cool. Uh, really well put together show. Um, I, I was really, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I, I kind of thought that you know a lot of the developers and publishers kind of like. Oh, it's you know it's Europe, and so we'll kind of give them second helpings on things. Uh, but they really, I mean, it was it was it was awesome. I mean, they did a really good job on it. Uh, people, I didn't like the people, but uh, <laughs> the games and all that kind of stuff was good, you know. So, but I never like anyone at a, at, a, at a convention. Like they just, yeah, you know, yeah, you're you, you don't go there for the I, gamers. <laughs> I was I was kind of curious how you'd react to the crowd, but um, so so yeah, I didn't get a sense for what your schedule was. So you just mainly went for just the media day. I, yeah, I went for the media day um, and tried to just try to hit the games that I thought were interesting. Okay. Um, noted a few other games. They didn't. There wasn't a whole lot of information that came out um, prior that was different from. Oh uh, yeah. E three. Yeah. So, but they, but you know, like with the with the Dead uh, Rising demo and a, uh, I believe it, with the Evil Within, there was a few, little bit of additional footage. But you know, I saw I saw a lot. I, I covered I covered a shit ton of ground on Wednesday, and I wouldn't have been able to do even half of that on on thursday so i'm glad that it got cool. timed out like that and i'm glad that me day there are less people but still um <laughs> you know well i mean so, I, don't, I don't like people i like i mean i like people but i don't like like people you know from, all those <laughs> illnesses floating around and i mean Co coop was there me. for gdc europe and then mm -hmm. it sounded like gamescom was divided into like it was like half e3 and half packs and it was just like Europe has brought together all three sides in w in one week, and it just sounded like complete chaos. Yeah, it was it was huge. I didn't realize that, I didn't realize that GDC um, was the same week as Gamescom and was in the same location. I, I think it was really cool because uh, the, the the GDC guys could come over, uh, guys and gals could come over and 
you know, check out Gamescom, and um, I don't know if it worked vice versa. I don't know if they right. wanted the gamers in DDC, uh, but it, the, that that part of it was cool, and to see like development teams and stuff like that going in there. But yeah, it was. I mean, it was a it was a clusterfuck at, at, at one point. <laughs> so, but I mean, some people like that. I not me. I like little groups. Like, if there was like maybe fifteen people there, that would have been like the perfect the perfect number for me. So what is it? What is, what does it compare to here in the states? Then that's kind of my question. It it probably it's probably close to PAX. Yeah. Uh, Coop said it's it, he thought it seemed bigger than PAX. Mm-hmm. So I, it, just the media coverage seemed that way to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just seemed it like was, there was a lot more information coming out of of. Uh, yeah, they actually do event. make they do make news at that versus PAX is not really news heavy. It's more yeah, um, yeah. more fan focused. But they but they let so many fans into Gamescom so. Um, yeah. that's the weird that weird I think my argument and I will talk about it uh, we've got more gamescom coverage uh, planned but um, I think gamescom needs to pick a focus <laughs> and uh, um, probably it probably just needs to be a fan event I don't I think I don't know what they're doing on the press side but you know Europe needs their press event too so um, I don't have yeah. the solution but it's just also kind of crazy that everybody that travels for that, um, this weekend is PAX uh, Prime, so everybody's going to that as well. So it's uh, I kind of feel bad for those guys that are yeah, doing a back to back. Oh yeah, doing a back. Did you see any ties, Ethan? <laughs> any people wearing ties? Yeah, uh, I saw a couple of them. They allow ties um, in I, Europe. <laughs> it was it was there was a, there was a clear distinction between, um, well, basically developers and anybody that was there with the games and like everybody else. Uh, now me, I tucked my shirt in, so I felt like, you know, I felt like I was okay looking at that point. But um, out that, yeah, that kind of surprised me too because you wouldn't think that. And this may be like it is in the states, but people just kind of r- rolled up and they got their you know press credentials and they had like jean shorts on and like, shorts. Yeah, it was just I don't, it was it was it was no inter- ties, it was jorts only. They were full yeah. of well, they had Cena's. ties on, but, but they were actually – they had scarves and jean shorts. That was like – that was the press, like, uniform for that day. So, um, yeah, I felt out of place. One question I had because uh, I kind of saw uh, some of the game coverage that you previewed and you've talked about. What was – did you get near Titanfall? Because everybody – that's all anybody seemed to be talking about when – yeah, yeah, I got near it. Coop played it. Okay. Um, he pl- so he and I talked about that, and he he had a good time with it. By the time I got to Titanfall, I I didn't think Titanfall was gonna be playable. I yeah. I like there was I mean there weren't very many playable like the big games. Very few of them were playable, and I I was kind of I was I was gonna either wait in line for that or I was gonna wait in line for Dead Rising at that point. And I made the decision. I was like, well, neither one of them is gonna be playable. Uh, Dead Rising to me, there's like a lot more questions around it, so sure. I went with that. And I'm pissed about that because I should have. I mean, I, I mean, it was good to see Dead Rising three, but I, I should have done both. I should have sacrificed. I mean, I think game for Titanfall. Yeah. I mean, we'll talk about it plenty uh, in the coming weeks. But like the coverage of Titanfall, Titanfall has <laughs> has baffled me as far as just like the runaway favorite. The run like everybody just. Is floored by it, and I just I don't know I I don't yeah. see I don't see that extra level to it that I, some I feel like maybe because when it was at E three it was one of the bigger games that actually had some decent play footage, mm-hmm. you know, and, and on the multiplayer level as well. So I'm thinking maybe that has something to do with that. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think there was just there's a lot going on in Titanfall, and even Coop, you know, said that I mean, especially with like the the kind of parkour movements you mm-hmm. got. As you're playing, uh, combined with you know the Titan itself, um, it just it looks to be a. I, I, I don't I don't know if it's going to be like a, a feature heavy type game, but I think it's going to be like a really solid shooter that's not trying to do anything but just be a solid shooter. And I, I think people kind of like that aspect of it. It's not modern military shooter, which is good. You've got you know Battlefield Four and Call of Duty Ghosts coming out, so like that's covered. It's something different, but also like. The, same, the scope yeah. to me is big, but not like there's not a single player campaign. It's just multiplayer, and I think that is why people are attracted to it because, mm-hmm. like, I personally think that a lot of these companies sh- can focus on one or the other, but it almost doesn't make sense to put in a single player campaign in a battlefield game because no one's gonna play it. Yeah, it's, I agree. And it's not gonna be memorable, you know. Well, it just it's smooth. You're going from you know sort of man on the the ground to this giant mech, so yeah. that, that's that's unique, and it just looks slick as hell. 
yeah, when, they, it when is, you go it from is one to the other. Smooth is like the 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 best way to describe it. I mean, it, it is pretty. They had other videos going, and it, yeah, it was. It's pretty pretty amazing. I, again, I'm kicking myself for not fucking playing that, and for not climbing inside that giant mech. I took a picture. Right. Yeah, Josh was in there, so at least that's yeah. The, he was inside of it. He wouldn't stop talking talk to me. He was being kind of a celeb. Well, he wouldn't talk to me. So yeah. yeah. A- anything else going on, even? Uh, no, 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 no. I've I've used up enough time. Okay. I, won't, I won't I won't talk about my manga obsession. So uh, no, we'll move on. Jason and I recently hung out um, in the last week, like in real life, not yeah, just Jason, in a Google Hangout. Uh, Justin is a real person. <laughs> he is. So yeah, is Josh Lee. It's true. We saw Josh Lee, and he was he friends with Ghost Rider. Exists. Yes. Yes, he did. He was very. Or was it Ghost Dad? Ghost Dad when he put his glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not Bill Cosby. Uh, we actually shared a meal with him. It was very interesting. Well, up to this point, I thought Josh Lee and Justin were just floating balls of psychic energy, but no, <laughs> no. it's actually there's actually a wow. We 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 had drinks and we had you know a, a, a na- nice lunch with others. There were other witnesses. I wasn't hallucinating. <laughs> it was all very realistic. Uh, but yeah, we weren't on a date. We were at Gen Con. Just for the oh wow, trip. no, no one was even thinking about the date. <laughs> if you were on a date, that's fine. We're, Not for the first one. Day. I got it. You know, you got to do the big group setting first. I don't just bl- I don't just go into a date. Yeah, you can't. You, it's just and awkward safety numbers. Otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, I talked a little bit about my Gen Con experience on uh, a recent podcast. So uh, what what do you think, Jason? Well, I went for two days. So the day that we hung out, Justin was my first day, um, and it actually gave me spreading it out was better. I think this time around because the first time for me was last year and it just seemed like we were just going down the aisle looking at everything going down the next aisle looking at everything going down the aisle and it just felt very very rushed um but this time it it was just more more relaxed more entertaining um uh, it was nice that josh actually had already walked the floor because he kind of knew what things were really interesting to look at um justin and i very poorly defended the the imperial empire that was embarrassing. So, that was very <laughs> embarrassing. I did. I I did. Um, actually, buy X Wing after the event. So oh, did you? We played very the cool. X Wing miniatures game. Um, my Tie Fighters were busy doing U turns for no reason yeah. uh, during our battle. We were very ineffective at de- yeah, defending the Empire. But um, I, that was one of the two games that I actually bought after the fact because think about Gen Con. Um, by the games at Gen Con, they're, they're actually cheaper online, so I bought them from Amazon after that. Yeah, that's usually true, but it is nice to, you know, sometimes buy directly from the developer, you know, especially if they're a smaller person, um, simply just because, you know, paying it for it a little bit. I did get a really nice piece of artwork, too. I actually ended up... Oh, yeah, I guess you weren't there when I actually bought the, the Ninja Turtle artwork. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. I bought, I bought that. It's over here. Cool. <laughs> Let's see it. Oh, no, oh, man. Oh, good, no, good. Yeah, no, that looks good. That's a well. That's some tight turtles. <laughs> tight turtles. Looks Real, very like original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic. Yeah, style. like you yeah. know, they're all wearing the same color, you know, bandanas or whatever. Like the total original stuff. So, um, I think that guy's name is Tyler Walpole. He's got some really interesting stuff, and. Uh, I actually talked to him for a little bit the second day I went, which was which was kind of nice. But yeah, I mean, it was just it was a really cool experience. Uh, we were kind of baffled at some of the cosplay. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cosplay. <laughs> no, well, just the overall. Oh cosplay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, what was what was the level of it this year? Because last year it wasn't bad. Like I felt it was, it was somewhat good. tame. But I've seen quality. a few pictures come through, and I'm like, it was like, whoa. It was decent, but there were, like Justin was telling me, there were just some that weren't necessary. I just, you know, <laughs> some reaches. I mean, I'm a, I feel I would definitely like got a little bit of a, I'll admit, kind of like elitism or just being an asshole in general. But my gut, my gut reaction when I go to Gen Con, which you know is primarily board game focused, when I see like video game characters that don't have any relation to board games or even even some of the Star Wars stuff, like I'm just like. That's not really what this is, but it's just I don't know. Like I feel like an ass, but my gut reaction is like that doesn't belong here. Like you, what are you dressing up for? This does this belongs at 
something else. But I, I, whoa. I'm, I'm, I've become more and more anti cosplay as like the days go by. I just at this point, I'm just it, it is not making sense to me. It just still doesn't make sense to me. Well, I think, we, it's, yeah. We saw this, uh, this two, these two guys. One of them was Ken. One of them was Ryu. And so, you know, we were just kind of joking about that. And then I get in my car, and as I'm, you know, trying to turn onto, like, the street, here come Ken and Ryu, like, five hours later. And I swear he... Drunk uh, as hell. I think, I think, I thought it was, no, it was Ken. That guy tried to do, you know, whatever, one of the, the, the classic moves, and just fell right on his ass. And <laughs> I got the... the the best laugh out of it. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, th- that's the thing though. None of them ever get drunk. Like if I was in like a costume, I would be drunk and terrorizing oh, yeah. Indianapolis. If, like, if you were not in a costume, you'd be drunk and terrorizing well, Indianapolis. Yeah, I mean, I do, you know, but still, like I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know. I think it. I, I think it. I think it just attracts the wrong crowd, and I'm starting to realize more and more. Um, I don't. I mean, I wouldn't say the wrong they, crowd, but it's like, I don't know. With, with cons in general, like there's. The one thing I love about Gen Con packs, the ones I've been to, um, is just like the feeling of community that kind of surrounds it, and just kind of the positive atmosphere around it. So I get that. Like, um, this is a place where you know you can let your geek flag fly, and that that's that's all cool. But I'm just I'm just saying my my asshole re- initial reaction is like, what is what is Link doing at Gen Con? Like, where's yeah. the? You should rough him up. <laughs> it's a, push him. Well, he was push six. Him into he was six, but I thought about it. Well, he was that... six years old. What are six year old? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't want. Here's the thing. I don't want kids at my my cons. I don't want too geeky of people at my cons. I don't want like people that aren't geeky enough at my cons. Like I've got a very specific <laughs> con audience that I would like to see. You know, I I, I, I want you to be your hygiene to be top notch. Uh, we make I want e- you to be wearing a belt. I think we need to make X con. And just I, 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 do, I, we do we really do like I I would like mid like middle aged <laughs> hobbyistgamercon dot com like that is what we need to do so we don't feel uncomfortable. Um, I'm, I'm, there's only people forty the people. Like, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, may not be many people, but we'll, we'll get it. You know, I don't know. I'm being mean about cons right now. I just I, I uh. when you're alone in the middle of, of Germany at a, at, a, at a convention and you're just surrounded by people with wiggly fingers and strange Japanese themed costumes on you. It just hits you in a weird spot. I, you, you forgot no George. Yeah, well, and oh, so many George. Jesus Christ. When did those come back? Someone tell me that. Is that cosplay? Is that like a, like a character that wears I blame and V-necks? I, I blame John Cena every time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Every no, time. these were tight. These were tight, like, uh, three-fourth, yeah, like... Is it Cena? Cena did it. He's got a special <laughs> place in my heart, though, so I like. I him. just want to just play uh, Miley Cyrus then. Yeah. <laughs> while we're while we're talking cons, we are actually going to be a guest at an upcoming con next year in Indy. The oh, yeah. Indy, the Indie Pop Con just got announced. Um, you can check them out at indiepopcon.com. That's really hard to say. It, it is. It also looks like indie popcorn when you read it. But Indie yes. Popcon, um, it's gonna yeah, uh, that'll be what the end of May, first week of June ish yeah. next year. So, but we will be there like with booth space and possibly other stuff. So not all of us. Um, Ethan will not be invited. Uh, my personal hope though is that after this con succeeds, we can um, do the first con like on a bunch of airplanes, so we can have Con Air. Ooh, that would be amazing. <laughs> That was no, okay. That's all my that's all my puns. But it, seriously, but, anything else going on Gen Con, Jason? Well, just with, I mean, with Gen Con, it's kind of hard to explain to people like, oh, I'm going to Gen Con, and like, oh, what is that? Oh, it's a board game convention. They're like, oh, like you know, the classic, you know, Parker Brothers. No, like, you just can't explain it until someone sees it. Mm-hmm. These are like legit board game, you know, makers that make some really interesting games that really not a lot of people know about and it's kind of sad it's kind of sad because a lot of these games are are really really fun yep and you can f- discover a lot of really different variety at you know this this con and it's it's been how long has it been in indie oh, it's a forever. while now yeah forever um, i think and they've got the next three years already lined up so it's getting uh, bigger and bigger it's it, it's it's i've warmed up to it and i i, I suggest if you haven't gotten into board games or tabletop games or uh, role-playing games that you, know, you, you basically go with a tour guide because that's yeah. basically what Josh has done for us, but 
Um, I've gotten I, into a few games since because I just think because that's of, a better way of describing it: tabletop games. Because yeah. board games, I think, give sort of the wrong impression yeah. to people. That table, t- it's definitely tabletop because just like video games, there is a huge variety of of tabletop games that you can really get involved in, whether it be card games or, you know, things with just dice. Well, what, what happened with the, the the zombie game that you guys were going to play? <laughs> so yeah, I bought my uh, my first set of dice um, because I'd never played a uh, pen and paper game ever. But we bought at I think at last last year's Gen Con when you were there, Ethan, uh, a couple of our friends yeah. bought the rule book to. Um, oh, shit, what's the name of it? Outbreak Un- Undead. Outbreak Undead, um, and which is basically a zombie role playing game and. Um, I talked about it a little bit, a little bit before, but uh, it was it was a lot of fun. My or one of our friends basically created this scenario where uh, we were we had to escape Gen Con because we were there after hours and we heard some stuff. One of our guys went out and he, you know, all we do is we hear him scream and then two shots go off and we can't find him and we have to like make our way through the exhibit hall, which we discover has zombies in it and. Uh, long story short, Will Wheaton tried to save our why lives. Did he, why did he have a gun? Because he's always packing. That was what he said. <laughs> like, I don't know. The other weird part know. was... Don't we they pl- frisk you before you walk in there? <laughs> the other weird part is we play, we roleplay as, our, as ourselves. So, uh, which was very, very different. Because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of an asshole when, when survival's on the line. So, um, but it was a lot Are of fun. Really? Yeah, you are. I think so. Well, okay, like I'm a keep the group together at all costs, but I get really in. I don't. I'm not very tolerant of people that try to go out on their own or risk the group. So we were quick to leave people behind because um, at one point Will Wheaton came to save us from all the zombies, and two of the guys picked a fight with him because. Will Wheaton. Yeah. <laughs> what, what the fuck is he gonna do against? Did zombies? you punch him in the he face? He has. He had a Hattori. Hanzo's sword from Kill Bill, and he's killed all the zombies around us. And then, oh my god, that was the geekiest thing you've ever said. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Kill make it Bill, up. Kill Bill, Will Wheaton, board games, and pen and paper RPGs. <laughs> Throw in an anime reference, please. Will you please? <laughs> if I do, it'll be an accident that I'm not aware of. So. <laughs> I'm gonna say. It. Oh man, but I yeah, know, it I was. Play that game. We need to set that up. Yeah. We should figure out a way to do that online. We'd stream it if uh, we could figure that out. So, yeah. Well, you 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 can with there there are there's a ton of them now. A ton of there apps. are a certain number of applications, yeah, that you can sort of use to play games with your friends that aren't exactly in the same room with you, which is pretty cool. I actually talked to a couple guys. Uh, there's a place called Epic Table, and they seem to have their act together, which is pretty cool because essentially what one person does is they buy the subscription for the service and uh, everything. With the the board game is um, in the cloud, so like if you come up with a board, you just put it in sort of the environment, and then everybody has access to all those graphics and and stuff, which is pretty cool. So, and it has a very basic uh, editor in terms of like it's kind of like a lower tier version of like Photoshop mm-hmm. that you can mark on the board and stuff to uh, sort of indicate to people what's going on and whatnot. So it seemed really cool, and it was just like a one time only fee. And then one person just has to host the game, and as many people as they can, you know, get into the game can play. So you don't actually have to be in the same room to to do these games, which is I think is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah there nice. were I think when we went last year, there were like two of those apps, but I think there were like half a dozen or more. Yeah, oh, I, wow. I only remember one last year, and then yeah, there was about six that um, I was able to at least see. And I maybe talked to. I definitely want to three ex- of them experiment with them because um, we need to get. Ethan in on some of this action, but maybe mm-hmm. we'll maybe we'll experiment at the charity marathon too. We'll, yeah, we'll have the time. So yeah, you could definitely get away with probably doing a you know a pen and paper online. I think with a stream, I think that could be interesting. Yeah. Okay, oh, I had fantasy football stories, but I'll save those. Oh God. <laughs> um, moving on to new releases of the week. Actually, kind of calm calm down. Um, this week, but. September's going to be bad, gentlemen. I think even starting uh, next week, they'll ramp back up. Of course, both of you have been playing nonstop Madden 25. Is that right? Yep, since midnight. Yep. yep. So that's uh, that football game is out. Man, this is... It's kind of funny that um, 
you know, this is like the anniversary game. This is like the big deal, but it's like kind of the most underwhelming and like just run of the mill Madden game of the last few years. Because last year yeah. they they redid the engine a bit and and really kind of and and tried to add new stuff. I got back into it last year. I tend to be a Madden player about every three seasons. Um, but, um, this one is just like, yeah, we're not going to really change anything up because we're getting ready for the next gen. And I don't really know outside of it being Madden 25, why you would get this one. Uh, uh so it just seems to be the most the underwhelming Madden yet. <laughs> the updated lineup, I guess. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's just, I, they need to do season passes for just roster updates. Cause I don't know. It, it feels like they they could have like really solidified what this generation's engine was going to be because you know they'll put out more Maddens for this for the next two, three, four years while the next gen gets going. But um, it, they didn't. It's like they didn't. They're all obviously working on the next gen one for next for for next year, and uh, it's. But this is the anniversary one that just kind of struck me as uh, kind of an odd circumstance. Yeah. I- I, I don't have much really to, to say other than, you know, they've been trying to make a big deal about like, oh, we updated the 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 way the line is work the line engine, and it's like, really, like yeah. is that is that really a big part of the game? No, it's you're either <laughs> running the football or you're throwing the football. That's what people do in that game. So, <laughs> line engines. I was actually picturing the the engine that actually draws the line on the field got updated, but <laughs> yeah, that was they put a lot of time and effort into that. <laughs> yeah. And then you know the, you know the, the, and, ooh, we updated the running game. No, you didn't. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> oh man, that's uh, that's gonna be a frustrating game to work on too. I hadn't thought I hadn't thought about that in a while. Just like what do you, why? I th- I feel like it's probably the easiest game to work. It's just on. like you just like import new stats and well, you make at, billions of dollars off that. <laughs> at least they didn't cram some like BS like oh what was that like dribble physics or whatever that yeah what NBA Live's that? doing yeah. You know, at least they didn't do that. Like I, I, I you know, golf clapped them for, yeah. for that one because that, what, what, that one just gives me nightmares. Yeah, I just dribble yeah. physics. I want football competition. Um, Suda fifty one's back this week. Killer is dead is out, and as someone that tends to play most of his releases, I don't have an interest in this game at all because I've never understood any of the trailers for it, and it looks like another Suda game and. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's getting kind of. I think people that like Suda like the game, sort of. They mm-hmm. like validate like their like for it, but it doesn't look like it's doing really well. Yeah, it doesn't. It, I didn't see any hooks to it. It looked more like, um, more. What's the word? More immature than most of his games, even, and it was more or less even more so than Lollipop Chainsaw. Exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. See, that's hey, yeah. Like there's a gigolo mode in this that. Now, uh, oh God, man! I tell you what, I, I'm again. I'm I'm not all about making this sexism thing like a big deal in everything that you do. But some of these games that are kind of getting out right now are just it's so strange. Like there, and there's no dialogue about them. It's it's just yeah. it's just really weird. Speaking of no dialogue about it, here, here's the biggest uh, forgettable franchise of the generation. Lost Planet Three is out. When I'm, did that happen? <laughs> That's the problem. Is I had because no idea. Well, when did they show? They they kind of previewed it last E3, and Ow. and they were like, "Oh, we're it's, we're gonna reinvent Lost Planet," even though they like <sighs> Lost Planet One was great. Lost Planet Two didn't fucking make any sense. No. Lost Planet Three doesn't even sound like the same game. No, <laughs> I don't know anything about like, it. Like, why would you do? Like, why would you just not wait? For the next generation to fucking come out and and take what you began with one, which was fucking mechs fighting giant fucking bugs, which was awesome. Yes. Don't do what you did with two, which was just make a Get shit him out of the mechs. game. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Give this franchise to someone that's not gonna fucking urinate and poop on it. Just do something that's not stupid. Fucking assholes. Just I'm I'm mad about this because this is one of the franchises that I like. I loved Lost Planet, like the yep. first. Mm-hmm. I loved it, and I just like I don't know how you that can was get that fucking game wrong. That was my second like major HD gaming moment. Like yeah. Gears of yeah. War was the first one, and then then I I got 
the 360 for Gears of War, played that, and then played the demo Lost Planet, and I'm just like, holy shit. I was like, this game controls like ass, but this is awesome looking and a cool concept. So, yeah. And they just never got together. That's, I don't know, like, Lost Planet to me just kind of defines Capcom at the moment for me, too. Just like, it, yeah. it doesn't know why it's good <laughs> sometimes. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. The. Let's see. Castlevania Lords of Shadow is finally out on PC this week. I think they also did, like, an ultimate package for <laughs> the consoles. Um, it's only twenty nine ninety nine. Um oh, I'm kind of curious to see it in HD, so you'll probably see me stream it at some point. So, uh, it's, part of, it's part of the deal I cut when I bought the domain HorribleNight.com, is that I have to check out... All the re-releases of Castlevania games. So, did did you f- ever finish it on PlayStation? Yeah, yeah I did. did. I finished it. and I finished the DLC, uh, the the questionable epilogue DLC, and I'm excited to play the story of Lords of Shadow Two. Mm. Um, cool. If somebody wants to play the game for me, we probably work out a deal. But um, I want to witness all of it. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that that game can be a chore, but. Mm-hmm. Really cool story, I guess. I mean, you played Mega Man, so... <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> um, Final Fantasy XIV uh, failed to relaunch again this week, I guess. They tripped out of the gate with their pre-release, but... Um, can I just buy seven? Can I just <laughs> yes, buy the can. re-release of seven again? Yes, you, yes, you can. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but this was like they just completely redid the online game uh, like after it failed out of the gate and um, supposedly um, they fixed a lot of stuff but their server queues weren't working on launch day so they didn't probably oh, didn't fix enough so not not the right stuff no. they probably fixed stuff that no one really cared about Speaking of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, that's the Summer of Arcade release this week uh, yep. All the trailers look like shit. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a really positive lineup. Yep. Um, I I feel like we've had like a run of like three really good release weeks, and this is just kind of the pooping everything out for September for some reason. Well, we we deserve a break. So. Yes, we do. <laughs> Somebody heard our our cries for help. Um, there's another MOBA for you to play, Ethan. Uh, Guardians of Middle Earth is out this week. <laughs> so you can have your Lord of the Rings MOBA. Yeah, well, yeah. Why don't I just I'll add another, add another college course to my video gaming. I'll learn all the ins and outs of that shit. And then, uh, Game Dev Tycoon made the leap to PC this week as well. I played Game Dev Story. I've not played Tycoon. Really? Well, I've I've had that one for a bit. Yeah. Or did I, it finally go wide? I don't, I'm guessing why. Like it's on Steam. And, oh, okay. Because yeah, I've, yeah. I've had that. And I've I've had a playthrough on my YouTube channel and everything. So <laughs> I have definitely I have I have documented proof. I have played this game. <laughs> I Doesn't... guess I just didn't realize that I bought it. You know, as the the beta release or whatever. Oh, so gotcha. yeah, that's that's gonna get really weird. I've been like I hardly noticed the early access banners on some of those Steam games anymore. And mm. uh, yeah, just... this wasn't even on Steam when I bought it. It was just a direct download from their website. Huh. It was like a, like a PayPal. Like it was like seven or nine bucks, just direct buy from their from their website. So, gotcha. it's it's an enjoyable game. The one thing I will say about Game Dev Tycoon though is that um, it plays a little too closely to how the game industry developed. So it seems a little obvious when you're developing games when you should stop developing for certain consoles, <laughs> which I kind of wish like no, you know. No, the, this is a bad idea. Why would you? The, do this? the game cast or whatever they call it—that's the Dreamcast. I kind of wish in an alternate reality that they would have made it so that it was successful instead oh. of sort of bombing. You know, it's it's predictable. It's like you can uh, you know, yeah. like the equivalent See, of the the Commodore doesn't last very long, and you know the the PlayStation huh. the. You know, everything has an alternate name. It's so you not can't really... like, you can't like, single-handedly alter the future of the Dreamcast because you released a series of awesome games no. and Sega no, turned which, it around. Which would be amazing if you could, that, because yeah. like I said, they don't drop that down for game pitch. <laughs> they, they don't necessarily call the you know the because they can't you know the 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 rights to all these you know consoles and games and stuff like that. I mean, you can certainly make games that are basically ripoffs of very successful games, but there are certain formulas that you can. Uh, that you can play, but like I said, I wish if if I could change one thing about that game, it would be that you kind of 
control how successful consoles are by what games you release. But mm. r- really, when it comes down to it, they kind of follow the, the actual history a little too closely for my, my taste. It makes but me if, it, a scrunchy I don't know how face. Much, I don't know how much it is right now. When I paid the 7 or $9 for it, it seemed pretty worth it. It was, it was cool. fun. Cool. Yeah, it looks interesting. It's, it's nostalgic, you yeah. could say. <laughs> get up, get hung up on that storyline detail like us. Um, <laughs> I think there's other ways to play it. We're, if we haven't established yet, we are assholes. So um, we won't be going to Game Dev Tycoon Con either. So <laughs> No, that sounds awful. <laughs> yes. um, video games, Jason, uh, what, what have you been playing, man? Uh, well, I've been playing Saints Row, obviously. No, oh, is that um, out? Yeah, just a little game called Saints Row. Oh, okay, 4. wait, wait, yeah. So, I'm going to make a big deal of this just to make you uncomfortable. Sure. Um, but it's also chronologically makes sense in our conversation. Um, you had an interesting reaction to the intro, and I want you to give you give yourself a chance to tell your story, defend yourself, and then we'll move forward. So, tell me about the intro to Saints Row 4 for you. Okay. For me, I thought it was a little... It. I know I'm going to start a, just a <laughs> storm of of activity here in chat. Thank you, Aaron, for being. We can quiet. mute. We can mute Aaron if, it, if that makes it easy, makes you more comfortable. <laughs> no, Aaron and I've we've aired our grievances. We're fine. My big issue is that it lasts just a little too long before you get into the meat of the game. I want to be able to control what's happening in the game, and I felt like it was maybe a little bit too on rails in terms of like. The intro. And I don't even think it even really educated people. I think it just, (laughs) you know, I think it was just there to be there. And I don't know. It just, it it was a little too quick time cinematic for me. I I hated it. So, so feel, feel, feel cautious with, with, with that. It was, yeah, it was, uh, (laughs) it didn't compare to the first, it saves for three at all. Like it, it. That's true. It, it, I mean, the the intro to Saints Row Three was more fun to play. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they could have cut out the very, very beginning and just gone from the presidential or from the White House. But, I kind uh, of yeah. agree. I kind of agree with that. That that's kind of what I felt like because you do kind of jump into the game and it is a little bit tutorialized, but mm-hmm. it's still very entertaining. That that that's yeah. exactly where they. I think they should have started it. Basically, I don't want to spoil anything, right, but basically right. the event that happens right before you start actual gameplay I guess you do do a little bit of gameplay before that but they when you actually jump into the game and stuff starts happening maybe have the movie event right before that then you're the president then go on from there it just seemed a little too slow like I was just bored honestly like I, I was laughing and I was enjoying it but yeah. I was I had my, my hands at the ready and I was just like okay when am I actually going to be able to start playing this game I've played all three of them so far yeah I know how to control everything. And yeah. actually, this is my first time playing it on the PC, and I still felt like, come on now, give me the game that I've been wanting to play because they really haven't tweaked it that much. They haven't tweaked sort of the mechanics of the game. They've just tweaked the storyline and sort of the comedy oh, yeah. pieces I of mean, it. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't... I don't care oh, how they sugarcoat it. I don't, I don't care how they sugarcoat it. This is a fucking expansion pack, and it's fucking yeah. awesome, but it's an expansion pack. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, the only... I want to defend the intro from the aspect of I just felt like it put me in the mood for Saints Row like I like sure. I, I, I liked the transition I didn't really I, the quick time events were annoying yes it was on rails but like the climax and the payoff the two standout moments in particular um, just it ma- made it all a wash for me it was just I was like I was I was ready to go I was laughing uh, Grant I was watching it with our live streaming audience so that probably was a little bit different but it was definitely yeah, fun to watch it along some other people and just like it was just it embraced the ridiculousness of Saints Row, and I knew I knew what was coming too. Because even like the transitionary scene where you, like when you're back in the fifties or whatever, like yeah. I played that for like twenty or thirty minutes just to prolong. Like I knew I was about to get my superhero powers. Like I knew things things were just about to go off the wall. So I was like, I'm just gonna enjoy the simplicity and the the linearity of what's going on right now. I th- and 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 kind of steal myself for the lunacy that is uh, about to come around the corner. I think I was trying to sprint that entire time during that oh. 50s thing. I was <laughs> yeah. just like, give me the ability to but sprint. But no, he's please. got the walk. He's the- 
Yeah, I, yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say. I, I think that, <laughs> and this actually leads into one of my my biggest grievances with the game is that there are moments Jeez. where they and I, I I'm enjoying this game. Okay, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I have a lot of of uh, criticisms of it um, because I like the game, and so you know I want to talk about that. But there's an aspect of pacing um, that they release you and they give you all this power, but then there's times that they take that power away from you. And the beginning sequence, I thought, okay, like this is just going to be, like, okay, get ready, dude, because here it goes. And there was quite a few moments in the game. Now, I'll, no, uh, admittedly, it was for the story, and thus, it, it made sense within the story. However, nothing else in the story made sense, so it was almost like, you know, like, I, I don't know. I guess I felt uh, stuttered at times. I think abs- absolutely. But there was like a part of me that was laughing the entire time of the opening, like kind of anti-terror sequence that you're doing in that I felt like it was almost playing off of other action games at that oh, point yeah. and kind of making fun oh, of no, them. Like, making fun of all of them. And it was yeah. just, <laughs> that's I, it, that undertone I think was driving me even through the fact that it was boring as shit to play. <laughs> yeah. but, oh, it's kind of like Blood Dragon where Blood Dragon did a few things that were making fun of video games but it was still really obnoxious so like half of it is like, do they know the pacing sucks or are they doing this just because they fucking can because you know that the rest of the game is going to be entertaining and whatnot so i mean but again it's not i mean those are just some some yeah aspects of it that you know yeah that's what it is for me i'm i'm basically if this is the only thing wrong with it so far (laughs) they're doing okay like i'm actually try. i feel like i'm trying to come up with something to to air i mean this was my immediate grievance with the game and i put it out there and it's it's People are going to remember that, which is totally fine. Since then, I've had great collecting clusters. Is like crack cocaine. <laughs> that's I all like... I've been doing. I've I've barely touched the main storyline because that's what I think that that's what I get out of Saints Row. I, yeah. I love just going around, getting cars, customizing the shit out of them. Like and I never using them again <laughs> and never using them again. Exactly, just <laughs> blowing all my money on you know customizing cars, and now they added these clusters in it. It's like. I immediately tr- collected the first 100 just so I could get the achievement, and then I'm pretty sure I've collected like 500 already. I highly recommend um, doing co-op mode for the cluster collecting too, because you collect for each other, and that was uh, one bonus oh, that nice. Aaron and Aaron and I found, and that was awesome. But yeah. that kind of led into my initial concern. Like I, I was honestly kind of um, had tempered expectations for this game, for as much as I loved. Saints Row the Third. I thought the superhero powers were going to break the game. Me too. And especially the the promise of two superheroes if you're doing co-op. I was like, that just yeah. like there's no way it's going to feel fun. But the superhero powers are done. They're done so well, and they I think they make the platforming and the verticality of the game um, uh, that that added well, to the world of Steer, Steelport just added a whole other level to the game for me, and I fucking love it. Yeah, I didn't realize sort of how they were going to implement the the superhero powers. I thought it was just going to be like a just a legit like you're a superhero now. Oh yeah, me too. Whereas, me too. <laughs> so that so that is yes a delight. I, I had the same same issues before. I was like, really? I actually kind of maybe just want to try to play the game without the superpowers and see if I could beat it that way. But the way they've done it, you know, not to give anything away because it's still totally worth like that. Oh wow, this is what yeah. they're doing moment for everyone. They've crafted that very well. I was very pleasantly surprised by that, and, and they, you to- and it totally makes sense whenever it happens because of basically th- what they did in three. Like yeah. all the the crazy geeky moments in three are firmly planted in four. I think, and because yeah. because it's still Steelport because it's the same city from three. Like they yeah. they almost had to add this layer, and yep. and so like from that side too, I just I embrace it as their design decision, and the fact that. I'm kind of like you, Jason. I'm still going back and tricking out cars, and I'm actually driving them around being an idiot just just because that's still fun. Yeah. But I'm glad I don't feel limited by it either, and uh, um, I'm, I couldn't be higher on the game right now. Ethan, what have you been up to in Saints Row? Um, I mean, I'm getting through it. I mean, I'm, I'm towards the end of it because um, <laughs> I wanted to make notes. But, you know... I'm enjoying my time with it. I like the superpowers. I do think that superpowers have taken it to as close to a breaking Saints Row mm-hmm. 3 as you possibly can without breaking it. Yep. Um, uh, there's definitely some moments. Now, I'm playing on the hardest level, too, which was a mistake. Um, 
because I think what that does is basically just make the enemies have a lot more health, which makes it kind of not fun, and they just knock the shit out of you sometimes. Yeah. Um, I, I think my thing with it is um, it does feel like an expansion, and I, I knew what to expect, and my expectations were tempered. Yeah. Um, I really, really would have loved, and, I, and I'm really excited for the next gen Saints Row and also whatever expansions can, or whatever DLC comes out for this to kind of add to it. But I was I'm really bored with Steelport. That's one aspect sure. of it. Like I, I'm 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 and entertained I, by what I'm doing in it. But like I'm that, that. I also hate the look of it. I hate the how the darkness the the over like the oppressive alien invasion yeah. side of it that like it doesn't have like day night cycles it doesn't See, like, I like that <laughs> but it's yeah, all the I, time I want some variation I like that though and I yeah. think it's interesting because because of the superpowers like when could you before really get on top of a building like like that you yeah. know what I mean like and just look around and then be like oh I want to jump over there and then just jump and glide over there you had to really work for it and i think it's kind of rewarding to be able to just go anywhere as fast as possible whether yeah. that you know whether that last i don't know but i i will agree that it does when you said expansion i thought yeah you know what it does kind of feel like an I mean, expansion. They a lot too but yeah. but it was nice to have the it is kind of nice to be <laughs> driving around places and going oh i i know that i need to turn right here i mean it's funny. I mean, some I don't remember who it was in chat, um, but they made the comment of "This is Saints Row Blood Dragon," and I was just pretty like, much. I was like, "Holy shit!" Like, so which Blood Dragon's fifteen bucks? Um, I like I under like I understand that everything, and I don't, I also understand why Saints Row Four came out when it did, from being at the end of the cycle to getting out before GTA Five, like to having a pretty short development cycle for. Um, a, an open world game of this magnitude, like it all makes sense that this is the end product. Um, yeah. Do you hold it against it? I think that's kind of a personal opinion. I feel like I'm getting uh, my money's worth, but um, it, it 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 it's definitely a thought in the back of my head, though. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it makes sense. And I think the and I think to complement the game is that you are it's it is that expansion, but they've added enough to it. I mean, it's superhero. It's one of the best superhero games out. Um, it's got, you know, I mean, there's Crackdown in there, there's yeah. Prototype in there, yep. there's Infamous in there, mm -hmm. and done in a fun way, because mm -hmm. those games could be obnoxious as fuck yep. sometimes. Yeah, real grindy. Um, yeah, and this game has, and I think that the, the, the fast, the, the speed at which you can travel, which was one of my gripes with Saints Row 3, was that sometimes you had to get to a mission, yeah. and it was like half the mission just getting there. Uh, they improved that, like... I mean, that's just being able to just run is is, I mean, is the, great. Um, I miss the vehicles a little bit because I never want to use them, but like, still, I don't know, like, dude. Okay, they have them there anyway. Like it's like it's like you know they could have just got uh, rid of them. Yeah. Um, Upgrade, they, you know. uh, upgrading the the garbage truck so that it explodes any car that touches it. That's still fun. One, <laughs> one thing I will say about the superpowers that does frustrate me, frustrate me a little bit is the fact that you, when you try to jump this much. You jump this much. Oh, you can't jump little. little. Yeah. yeah, and that, <laughs> that bothers me. I wish there was some sort can of you, button configuration that you could slow it down a bit. Is there a way to turn off the 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 super slams? The the like the fact that you do all the powered up versions of the wrestling moves now, like because oh, you're all, you because you have to run up to him, which does your super run, and then like I still want to do the regular wrestling wrestling moves. I don't always want to beat the shit out of them completely. Oh yeah, I mean I want Some my of those variety. Are really cool. Yeah, but yeah, I, mean, I know what you're saying. They're awesome, no, and I I try to I try to win. Uh, I forget the the name of the the little checkpoints that are you know that are surrounded by the the aliens, the little red areas where you got to clear clear them out of that. Uh, yeah. But I always oh, try yeah, to win yeah. those by just beating the shit by using only wrestling moves. So yeah, you yeah. can. Yeah, um, and actually, yeah. it might. It, sometimes it actually is a lot easier to do flash it that points, way because thank you. yeah, flash points because they don't they can't really touch you. But I will say those aliens are kind of hard to shoot sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. it, that's a layer I mean, the, of the game that was was well good. And I want to I want to say it feels like the alien using the alien guns on the aliens isn't as effective. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel I, like maybe they've 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 like uh, learned to absorb uh, lasers. I, guess, yeah. I don't know. I've been sticking with my super soaker and my rubber band gun. So I love the I love the little customization stuff. Like they just uh, they they made everything a playground 
and the narrative excuses for everything to work the way it does are just it's fucking brilliant. Like yeah. they've yeah. like like you said, there was there's that layer of proto- on prototype and infamous in, for, in particular that it has to adhere to its game world and its seriousness. Saints Row doesn't have those limits. It's just yeah. like everything works within it, and um, I think you know in the end. I think I'm going to enjoy Saints Row the Third more on its, like, a- as a standalone game. But yeah. if Saints Row Four existed on its own without Saints Row Three, I think this would be, like, one of the best games of the generation. Like, yeah. it just encompasses yeah. everything that that genre can do and anything's fun and possible within it. And um, yeah. on that regard, it's it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Well, I would love to see somebody's reaction to Saints Row Four that has never played a Saints Row game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because there's, there's that... There's that aspect of hilarity and then also scope that saints row 3 had that like we already have experienced and so we're going to be a little bit more critical sure. coming into it but yeah i mean I, I definitely think that that would that would be cool but it also makes me think so we've got alien invasion with saints row what else could we you know fill Steelport with i mean if they're going to keep using that like what else I, can you add to well they've it? said i would that... love like a big like i would love werewolves and vampires and that kind yeah, of yeah i think it was supernatural with it yeah, yeah, that would be great. That would be awesome, and still have the superpowers. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. Well, yeah we'll I think I, I think Volitions actually said they're going to take a break from Saints Row, though. Like what I want for what I want for Saints Row from them is to figure out how to incorporate their destructible environments from Red Faction. Yeah. Oh yeah. And in a scaled down but fun way that still works within Saints Row, and then reboot the series using that. But um, that's my that's because I don't know where they where you go from here, like. I think if you give me the new city, you can start over with my powers. But the thing was, with the superpowers, um, it only works because I've already been in Steelport for so long. Like, I don't want to drive around Steelport for another 30 hours. I want to be able to mix it up to my uh, my liking. But yeah. But cool. That was uh, that was really fun last week. We po- we streamed the game a lot last week and posted a, a handful of highlights. Um, but just having pretty much everybody on the site in some fashion was touching the game. And uh, that was... That was pretty cool to kind of come, come around um, to that game at the same time. We haven't had that in a while. Um, beyond that, Jason, what have you been playing? Well, I finally got around to playing Torchlight 2. <laughs> I bought that during uh, the Steam sale. And there's you know been a little bit of uh, you know rumors that some people wanted to play some multiplayer, so I figured I might as well get this thing installed and figure out what the hell I'm doing. So uh, I played a little bit. I'd say I played maybe three, four hours of it. And I'm enjoy- I'm enjoying it. It's it's it's, I because when I saw I don't know somebody was streaming it one time maybe you Justin, um, I was like oh this seems kind of like Diablo a little bit um but more lighthearted I think mm-hmm. which, which is nice so uh, I'm I'm enjoying it I'd like to maybe experience it with other people I think that's probably what it, it exists like Nomar in chat <laughs> perhaps <laughs> yeah I was gonna say yeah he he's, he's developed a crush on you just because you bought the game hey that, that works for me. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I, that was the thing. You know, when I when I bought most of my games for the Steam sale, it was either you know, do I buy this for the multiplayer aspect of it? Because I also you know purchased Borderlands Two for that sole reason, even though I already had it on the PS3. Um, That's okay. Or, or if it was something that you know, I was a really really good deal. And for the most part, most of the games I bought were for the multiplayer. So, um, I you know, I picked up that. And then another random thing that I I picked up during the Steam sale was Oregon Trail, which. <laughs> yeah. um, I've been playing that with uh, a few known celebrities from Horrible Night. Um, um, sorry, I before won't... you before you move on to that, yeah. Um, Ethan, in retrospect, I'm kind of curious because he brought up the lighthearted tone of Torchlight Two, and uh-huh. like I love I love the the look and feel, the atmosphere of Torchlight. Um, where do you where do you sit as far as atmosphere goes between Torchlight and Diablo? Um, I thought Diablo 2 was probably the best in terms of atmosphere. Um, Torchlight, between Diablo 3 and Torchlight 2, if you're making those two comparisons, you know, Diablo 3 is is darker, but it's still much lighter, feels much lighter than the other games. Um, I like Torchlight 2 a little bit because I kind of wanted a break from that intensity. And so to me, it felt like like a PG-13 Disney movie, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and and I liked it. It was cool, but it wasn't too cartoony and fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was still some some there was some shit going down, but uh, but yeah, but definitely between those those two games, um, I like the atmosphere a little bit better it, on on Torchlight. 
And did you see did did you see the Reaper of Souls Diablo three expansion in action at Gamescom? Or did you see the trailer after the fact? Uh saw the when did they show the trailer? They showed the trailer at uh, they didn't show it at Gamescom. No, oh, I saw GDC? it after that. Okay. Um, oh, no, they, they did show it. They showed it at, at Gamescom. I didn't see it like when they did show it, but um, uh, I sh- you know like after the fact. But I don't remember when it I was. I guess w- what I'm getting at is like I wasn't one of those guys that you know we freaked out at the colors of Diablo three or how the yeah. lighthearted it is. But I kind of would love for it to just go full bore into being you know just horror gothic. Uh, demonized adventure you know just go yeah. go go really dark with it because torchlight 2 can kind of cover me on the other side because i felt like Tur- torchlight 2 in that regard had more personality it stood out to me more so than diablo 3 just kind of came across as generic it was yeah it was pretty generic and that's what they're trying to to solve with reaper souls that's that's one of the things that they're saying because i think that they were trying to again they're trying to reach a, a broader audience that was their goal initially with that where mm. torchlight 2 you know it's got its audience it's not too concerned about that it's a cheaper game a uh, development is not as expensive but diablo 3 in 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 kind of holding back a little bit again it is not a light game when people say oh it's too cartoony it's not yeah. cartoony right. but there's a few things that happened in Diablo and Diablo 2 that just were more intense, you know, and there was there was more of a, a, a of a background of this this evil that felt more frightening than Diablo. Th- I never was like frightened in Diablo 3. In Diablo 2, it was like really tense most of the time, and it was like this evil is is permeating this whole land. Whereas Diablo 3 was like ah. Everyone seems like they're doing fine. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to get through this. We've I mean, come to grips with how shitty things are. It seemed more hopeful. Diablo 2, they were like, you're gonna, you're probably going to die. Like, you're probably not going to make it. This is, like, a, kind of a big deal for you. Diablo 3, they're like, oh, you're tough. You're a Nephilim. You're, just, you're fucking an angel and a demon, and you're just better than everyone. We Wait, what game you. was that? Where you're fucking a demon and an angel? It's a fucking demon and angel. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. It's what happened him to him at uh, Gamescom on the train. I was going to say, yeah, that's how that's. <laughs> Gamescom so, was a prequel to Diablo 3. Do you, Jason, do you see yourself playing it much solo, or are you just kind of waiting for, waiting for bros? Oh, Torchlight? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'll play by my myself. I think I think there's enough variety there. I, I, it's been a long time since I've played anything like that kind of okay, game. Okay, cool. I don't, don't. I never. I never played Diablo three. I hold on to that because I feel like Ethan and I went a little too far with it. Like okay, once when when Ethan when you hit Van Helsing, it was just kind of like, you know what? I think I've clicked on enough stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it went because we Diablo three heavy, Torchlight two super heavy, and then um, we had the loot fest of Darksiders two and Borderlands two. Mm. Darksiders two Borderlands and then Path of Exile. I was playing yes. that for a while, and yeah. then yeah, and then Van Helsing, and I was like, what am I? And then I went back to Torchlight two. So yeah. I mean, you can, it gets to a point, but I think Torchlight 2 out of all of them, to me, felt it, I, the best. Mechanically. Yeah, what it is. Yeah. Well, that's, that's just good a lot to hear. To I'm glad I yeah. wasted my money on it. So. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. weird to validate your poor purchases. Hey, yeah. that, that works for me. <laughs> if this podcast serves any purpose, it is it is to validate my purchases and help you feel better about yours. Yeah. Good deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oregon Trail. Yeah. Um, how's your How's your crew? How's all, how How are we doing? Like, well, okay. So there's there's Andy, mm-hmm. and I shot him in the face. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and this is all documented on my YouTube channel, by the way. Um, there's 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 Justin. You. There's, how am I doing? Uh, you're doing okay. Oh well, you should watch today's video. Okay. All right. Uh, just just saying. Um, there's Ethan, and there's Aaron as well, and. It's it's kind of interesting. Let's see. Ethan keeps getting, what is it? He, Ethan always is sick, which is appropriate because you have yeah. the allergy <laughs> issue. Justin always breaks a leg or his like ribs or something. <laughs> I'm fragile. It, like I said, Andy's been gone kind of since the beginning. <laughs> and, right off and, the bat. And Aaron, Aaron, at this point. Um, is a zombie of sorts. Not of really sorts. quite. Not quite. Dude, shoot him in the head. What are you doing? Not quite a zombie, but he's definitely been bitten. Yeah. So, I mean, at like this, at this point of where I'm up, because I ended up recording about eleven episodes that lasted about fifteen so, minutes. So Ethan and I are on our way out, 
What are you? Not necessarily. I mean, we're, we're not gonna. Um, it, like I like I said when we get when I get into survival scenarios, I just get very pragmatic, kind of become an a- asshole. Like we're we're not gonna make it. But are you still just kind of in that mode where you can use us to get to the finish line a little bit easier? Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but but Justin, you were you were glass Justin on my playthrough as well. Yeah. And we made it to the end, so it it's possible. You well, can you're just, both I mean, better heroes than I am. I'm just saying I would have shot both of you in the <laughs> head or like the kept your body time, parts around to feed the zombies. Out of Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> I will okay. I will give you a, a a little bit of a teaser. I do make it to the final finish line. I'll say that. Okay. Oh, isn't that? Can I just ask? Was isn't that kind of a cool like? It is kind of. It is pretty. I wasn't cool. expecting it at all. I was. That, I, I I thought I I was trying to figure out how they were going to end the game. So so yeah. I it. I hopefully have made it entertaining enough for people to watch. But I think we're. I've, I yeah. I uploaded episode six today so there's five more coming and i have put them up on tuesdays thursdays and sundays i think cool so uh there, there should be at least another week or so uh, of those and it's it's a lot of fun you know it, it's kind of it, the nostalgia really sells it for the most part but it's yeah. also a pretty like i immediately wanted to go and play it again oh know, nice which was, which was pretty cool so um you know it, it, and it's kind of fun just to Simulate having your friends in the game with you, and then yeah. killing them, or I, I like that you be killed. I mean, Ethan did that on his live stream of it. Like yeah. you, you filled the car full of us, yeah. and then I just that that was your first instinct too. I think that's 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 kind of well, cool. Well, and it, it it does sort of live up to to being perhaps streamed. I think you know because then you get other people involved, and they can help you with some decisions and stuff like that. I I immediately thought that I was like, why, why don't I stream this? But because it has terrible audio, because you both ran into audio issues. With the well, yeah. <laughs> well, I did, but all of the ones here on out after, so 5 through 11, mm-hmm. perfect. Like, perfect audio. I don't know what it was. Um, it was more so my microphone rather than the game, I think. Oh. So. Yeah, mine was, like, the music was super loud, I think. Well, Some, yeah, something. mine, the uh, the bloops and beeps and stuff were, like, super loud compared to everything else, and then my uh, mic was a little too quiet. Yeah. So... But no, it, it's it's a lot of fun. I, re- I recommend it. I mean, anybody that ever played Oregon, Oregon, Oregon or- Trail, Portland, Oregon Trail. Yes. <laughs> um, e- even if they just understand the concept of it, I think they'll they'll get a lot of kicks out of it because it it is just kind of silly that instead of a, a, a wagon, you use a station wagon. It's it's very tongue in cheek in a very very fun way. I watched yeah. like half of Ethan's playthrough, so I didn't really feel the desire to play it, but. I don't know if you you both kind of yeah. reacted to in the fact that you want to play it again. I was like yeah. that might that might be worth me checking it out. That is the thing I I've been thinking about though. It's like are people wanting to play this? Or are they just wanting to watch me play it? You know, yeah. I, I I would recommend. I mean, it's it's cheap enough now that I think a lot of people, you know, would feel pretty validated by the purchase. Mm-hmm. So I, I say I say grab it, jump into it. You know, if you play it through once, I think it's you know your money's worth. Um, so long as you are able to get further into the game. I, I imagine there are some people that don't quite, you know, understand the mechanics very well and probably, you know, go south pretty quick. But um, Like me, I, I, actually, I will find a way to fail that game dramatically. <laughs> I'm actually pretty surprised that I got all the way, to be honest, just based on what happens to me and others in the game. So I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it too much, but it is a lot of fun. So uh, cool. check it out. Cool. Ethan, it looks like you played some video games. What were their names, and what did you do? I did. I did play some video games. So, what was it last week? Um, my wife's been out of town for two weeks, and I, I kind of <laughs> it's all blurred my, into one. It, yeah, it's it, it's um, yeah. <laughs> I, I my my concept of time is just so thrown off. You know, here's just a little fun fact. You'll know that you, you you've met your soulmate when. You know, you actually can function like a real human being when they're around. So, just anybody who's currently single looking, that's a good good aspect of it. Because when she left, suddenly I just like became like a like a college aged idiot. Um, I played a shit ton of video games though, which was a benefit, and I I, I was so out of it that I t- took a chance and decided to try Dota two out. Um, fortunately, Verdian was in the chat along with some other people, and. Uh, 
so I'd been playing Spelunky and FTL and having some beers, and I was getting a little bit <laughs> like angry, angry, Sp- drunky, and, and, pr- and pretty drunk. Yeah, it, it, that was that was kind of how it went. I was there was some science experiment I was trying to pull out of it, but that's what I that's how I excuse any poor behavior. <laughs> any any consummation of alcohol. It's it, it, yeah, it's totally science. scientific. So going into Dota two, um, in my mind, in my cocky, drunk asshole mind. Um, I thought I was just gonna jump right into a multiplayer game, and like like yeah. everybody on the stream was like, "No!" It was like slow motion, like kind of. And, and, and I was that. like, "Oh fuck you guys!" Like I don't, you know, I don't, whatever. I, if people yell at me, I'm like, "Oh, that's you know, whatever." You, you know, I don't give a fuck. But the game doesn't allow you to do that, and that was actually really, really good because these games are complicated as fuck. Like <laughs> like I've played real time strategy games. Um, you know, I love Dawn of War 2, and that's what I kind of thought this was like. Oh, you just, instead of having a whole army, you've got one fucking guy. How tough can that be? It's not just the gameplay, because after, like, three games against the computer, oh, call him Stomp. I'm sure someone will make fun of me on that. Josh um, Yeah, well, oh, Josh and I use a comp stomp on a uh, company of heroes all the time, so. Um, but, um, there's, it's not just the gameplay, because, I mean, the gameplay is, is, I, I figured it out for the most part, and there's all kinds of little meta shit going on, I know, but um, for the most part, I have the idea of it. But there's uh, like 110 characters you can choose from. There's all these different items you can buy. One hero is good against another hero, and it, it is... I don't know how people play these games. Like, I've decided to put time and effort into to journaling about my, my experience in this game, because sure. I, I think to, like MOBAs <laughs> are huge. What did I call? Yeah, like it? I, I said today on today on Dota. Um, I, I, I almost like changed your intro to Dear Dota. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, it just it, to me it's really interesting because Dear Dota Two. That's the name of the series. <laughs> we we uh we play a lot of games, but this is a game I've not I've not played a MOBA. I've never played a MOBA in my life. I, I'm really curious what the appeal is to it because everything I hear, it's it's really complicated. Um, it's a very toxic uh, community, um, and I'm like, why do people like it so much? And and I want to know, like, I want to understand what gets people into it. Like, I want to understand why, you know, what aspect of it. And and it is it is a very chess like game in terms of like the strategy. I mean, there's a lot going on, and it's not quite as easy as you think. Um, it, it 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 is appealing in a way. I don't think it's going to be a game that I'm going to play long term. Um, I'd like to give it like three sessions at least and get at least one online game streaming but yeah. um it's just you, you got to dedicate a lot of time to that game yeah well, um, what they're like 30 40 minute matches right yeah and like into learn and to actually to be good um you won't be good let's give up on that because to be when i say good i mean like not like annoying to your team because like that's like the big thing is like you can fuck things up. Like, when you die, not only do you die, you're leaving a window in your defense, and then you're also giving the team money, um, which is not, like, you know, when you play Call of Duty and that kind of stuff, like, you might die, but if you got somebody on your team that can make up, you know, and kills, it's not a big deal. But in this, I mean, it's a double it's a double whammy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I don't know, it, it, it's a balancing act that um, it, it's impressive, um, to see people playing at high levels because I watch a couple streams after just to see how people go. Um, but I, m- to me, I can't dedicate enough time to that game. Um, and again, I, I this may change. I may play and be like, oh shit, I love this game. But it just it seems like like a huge investment, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't I don't love to invest that much time in, in any single game, um, except for FTL. And, le- and except for FTL and in, and in Fallout New Vegas. But but FTL is a personal. Yeah. experience yeah. I can keep to myself. I have nobody on the outside. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no way any of us would stick with it unless we were playing with a team of us. Is the way I kind of look at it. Mm-hmm. And then, then this site devolves into something unrecognizable. And <laughs> um, Dota which might be worthwhile to some people because you know yeah. the Dota community um, is um, it can kind of take care of itself, so it would be yeah. okay. But um, and I also, I'm also kind of curious, like, you, you kind of harped on the community side of it, and I kind of make fun of that with, you know, how hard it would be to jump into a MOBA, how hard it would be to jump into Dota 2, but I think, I wonder how much, from the outside, how much the, our 
prejudices or our, our opinions of the MOBA community are skewed from the League of Legends community, which I know that has a lot of bad seeds in it and, and, and skews a little bit differently than I almost think that the Dota 2 community might be a little bit, I don't know, more mature. That's kind of my, that's kind of my impression. From all I've read into it, looking into it, it's a smaller community, mm-hmm. so obviously with with that you're not going to get as much of it. But it's just, and I'm not, and I don't want to come out and say everybody who plays Dota two yeah. is an asshole because that's just that's not that's just simply not the truth. But it's a, the type of game that you can't get away with being real bad. Like you, there's no you stand like, out when you room. fuck things up. Exactly, and not, and not only you, I mean the whole game, you can ruin the whole game by making a, a, a bad move. Um, and whether that's an accident or whether that's you just being an asshole, it doesn't matter. Like when people invest that much time in the game, and I understand. Like I, I play games, and there's someone being an asshole. It, it's really annoying. But at least in those games, it doesn't affect you that much. Um, and then you can just jump into a different game. But with Dota uh, and, and League of Legends, it, it looks like you know it takes some time to get into games to get that right group of people. And you know you don't want to just waste that time because someone is being an idiot or isn't playing it well. Um, but 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 I do think that there's probably somewhat of a difference. But again, I still think it's it's. I'm a very light-hearted person when I'm playing games, and I don't like if someone starts yelling at me or is upset with me. Like that's I, I, this is my hobby. If I was making money, you know, um, off the game, that would be one thing. But like yeah. I, I don't I don't know. I don't want to get into that because I think eventually once you're used to that, then you yourself have to adapt. And I don't want to become an asshole. You know what I mean? Um, so, um, Did you care to I, retract any statements from earlier in the show? Right. <laughs> well, well, I guess that is kind of true. You jumped all over that, Jason. <laughs> more, more, more like playful asshole. I don't want to be right. like an actual asshole asshole. But, but again, I, but I, I'm, I'm, these are my, these are, this is the beginning of my yeah. opinion about this game, and we'll see where, where it goes. No, later, like, but, I think um, there's value in documenting that, too. Because, like, yeah. there is no denying that, you know, League of Legends is the biggest game in gaming right now. So, yeah. Uh, and Dota 2 coming off the international, like it's incredibly fascinating. When we were getting ready to play um, Outbreak Undead, the guys were actually watching uh, Twitch streams of whatever League of Legends tournament was going on that weekend, and the I thought they were watching something on like it looks like ESPN in their presentation, and I hadn't yeah. sat to watch one of those broadcasts and where that stuff is going. Um, I will never get into it, but it is incredibly fascinating. Well, they've been doing yeah. that with with StarCraft over in like yeah. Korea forever. Yeah. So you know, it only makes sense that there would be another game that came around that kind of kind of did that. So mm-hmm. yeah, you know, they they've they've kept that community has kept StarCraft alive way longer than I ever anticipated it. To the yeah. point where like you ask them like, oh, have you played the you know the second one? No, like <laughs> there's no point. Like I get all of the satisfaction. Yep. you know, out of out of the first one. So, um, I've seen a little bit of it, uh, but it would be curious to kind of. But yeah, I'll blow I'll blow through the uh, tutorial, Ethan, and we'll we'll I'll jump in in a couple games with you when you're ready for multiplayer. And I'm sure there'll be a couple other noobs from Horrible Night that will uh, happily yeah. participate in our self destruction. Because it's yeah. what <laughs> five players? It's yeah, five on five. five. Yeah. 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 We'll get four players, and then we'll have we'll like bring Verdian's ranking down by having him play with us. <laughs> so, but yeah, cool. I was glad to see you picked that up. Yeah. So what we'll else? See. Um. So gun, I, I did a review on Gunpoint last week, and uh, man, that was a, such a good game. Aaron talked about it a while back. Um. Actually, a, a writer for PC Gamer actually did it in his spare time, and it was just such a. I, I love when a game. Um is different like to a point like it, when it does something that you've just not ever seen and this is a game that's that did that and um a gunpoint is a i want to say a puzzle not a platformer because you're not i guess it, it's a puzzle platformer um stealth game uh and you have to basically sneak into these uh, you know high security buildings and uh, steal things and erase information and you do it by rewiring the building, so you hit a button, and uh, rewire, rewire like a light. And instead of someone hitting a button, and turn the light on, it opens a door and lets you in. I mean, it just—it's really cool how it's all put together. Um, 
uh, read the review because I don't want to you know go back into a bunch of detail on that. But uh, it's definitely a really good game worth picking up. I think it's relatively cheap here um, right now. But um, it's just really really cool cool uh, game and. Um, I, I wanted more of it. God damn it! Like I, I hate it. Yeah. Like, like I hate when games like kind of overstay their welcome. But there's been this is one of those games that just I was like, oh, I want some more because it's funny too. Like it's a yeah. really funny game because most of these spy games, you know, the spy is real serious or real sexy or whatever. And this spy is pretty like like it, like if I was a spy, I would be the spy on this game. Like basically, like just <laughs> so an doesn't, isn't exactly <laughs> sure what he should be doing. Um, and you have a magical pair of pants or a highly <laughs> advanced ma- a pair of pants, um, and you can jump around. And do, it's just, it's, it's, I don't know. There's, there's, every aspect of the game is, is really well done. And th- th- to know that this was done in, you know, someone's spare time while they did other things, I mean, it's <laughs> well, pretty cool. Um, well, they reviewed it was very successful as well. So, yeah, it sounded like it, oh, Gunpoint might have been one of those games that made its money back before it was released, I yeah. think. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and kept I, and kept making the money well, keep, well past yeah <laughs> i keep meaning to play it um and you kind of beat me to the punch because I, I was about to stream it and saw you'd blown through it so i was like well i'll wait till there's another uh run on it so um i'll, I'll revisit it later but it looks I, i've heard nothing but awesome things about it like no, like yeah. not even like nitpicky things just like this is a game you need to play so yeah the only thing i had to say about it was it wasn't it yeah. was, wasn't super long, but I mean, there's a level editor. I wanted like, more. I wanted more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's that's a that's a not Fuckers. a bad thing to say at all. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely. That's a. It, it took me about three hours to get through it, but you know, the levels you can you know have different strategies and levels and stuff like that. Um, but it's cool, and it has a really cool finale. It, again, one of those games that doesn't need a really awesome finale, but it has it anyway, and it's really like really empowering, really gets you pumped up. So, cool. I appreciate it. Did you did you pick this game up, Jason? I know you you were playing some indie games, but I didn't remember if it was on. No, I didn't pick it up, but I have, like you guys said, it's only yeah. been okay. positive stuff. But uh, you know, it looks like it's ten bucks now. You know, yeah. it, it's a very good possibility for me. I I, I do want to pick up Spelunky first, so yeah. yeah, get on that get on that daily challenge leaderboard. I know Spel- I need to get Spelunky there. has more long term value, I think. Um, yes. Roughly, I'll and we're all about, playing it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I won't be one of the cool kids. You gotta be a cool kid. Cool kids be playing smoothie. You get on my leaderboard, you get famous, man. Cause... <laughs> I'll, I'll be the one guy that starts playing and then everyone drops it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, Jason's playing now. It's time to move on. Yeah, it's time to move on. <laughs> yeah, fucking Torchlight 2 is ruined by him, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, Ethan, did, so, did your racism re- return as well? Yeah, a little bit. Um... Uh, so Matt Hiddle, uh, my best bud, um, who lives in Pennsylvania, uh, given a lot of personal information, don't, don't track him down, but his birthday was uh, a few weeks ago, or a week ago, and we had a, a pretty badass session of Orcs Must Die 2, and god damn it, that is such a good game. That is just <laughs> such a good game. Um, so much better when you're playing with somebody, but there's nothing more satisfying than, than building traps and having shit walk through it. I mean, especially it just, orcs. Neat, especially orcs. Especially when their giblets go flying all over the place. That is that's a good game. I, I I've played it. I've talked about it before. Um, I, I'm sure people are familiar with it. Uh, if you don't own that game, and Verdine and I even actually played at one point. I think we even streamed. Um, if you also you played with played Aaron. This, I did play with Aaron. We that's when we uh, reviewed it or did a mm-hmm. reflex review. But oh, there's just so fun and all kinds of DLC. I mean, there's a lot that you. It's a very good value right now. Go pick that up if you don't have it. I wonder uh, what they're an doing now. Well, because they were they released a couple games. They're pretty quick. Robot did. Um, oh, but, but did they've they been just, they've been um, a little bit quiet since the DLC yeah. stopped there. So, oh, they they also do Hero Academy. I forgot about that. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm hoping for some news, some next yeah. gen works must yeah, die three. They, they got to be doing. They're doing. You know, they're doing something. They have to. That game did. Both those games did yeah. quite well. So. Yeah. That was also one of those that I think came out on co- came out on console first, and they decided, yeah, we don't really make any money on the consoles. P- PC is the place to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's got a cool uh, uh, Steam community, and it, it's got some workshop stuff. Um, cool. Yeah, and the War Mage is awesome. So. Oh, uh, well, let's start here with uh, I finished the Dark Brotherhood questline in Skyrim. 
uh, this past weekend. Actually, yeah. took me took me longer than I thought. I I got up to the final mission on my live stream, and I had to go. I had to go pass out, and then it took me two hours to finish the final the final mission. But that was a really fun story storyline. I really got into that and um, hated some of the characters in it. Loved <laughs> some of the characters in it. it de- like I actually need to go back and. The fun part about playing those games live is I can't really hide my reactions to them. Like I was fooled by the story. Like I, the characters that I was kind of siding with, kind of fucked me over, and and vice versa. And um, it was um, it was a lot of fun. I'm, fu- I'm that was like the one quest line I'd kind of heard about. And plus, it goes with the sneaky character that I I, I wanna I wanna be. Uh, one additional bonus is that through those quests, I've gotten this scary ass demon, demon horse, Shadow Mare, mm-hmm. which um, tanks dragons better than Lydia. I figured out. <laughs> hey now. So that was kind of interesting. Lydia's still still with me, and she's man. Um, something f- happened in the course of this quest line. I wrote a um, well, I finished writing a little piece about it too uh, that I'll post later in the week. That um, so. I always play RPGs like hardline good or hardline bad, like nothing in between. But with Skyrim, I'm just kind of okay doing whatever. I'm okay with some of these bad decisions and people finding out that I'm not the perfect the, the perfect hero and cuz I've assassinated so many people that I'm just kind of okay with, you know, picking off a random dude now. Like it's not as big deal to me. I was like, "Oh, you know, the guards will come after me, but you know, whatever. We'll we'll pay them off or um, actually, the chat got mad at me because I didn't break out of prison. But um, well, you didn't use your thinking ability either. No, I forgot about that. So <laughs> still learning some. Uh, uh, still learning some of them. But um, I mean, it's certainly been entertaining watching you play it. That's for sure. You know, like if you were like super clean and fluid with it, it would be <laughs> as entertaining. <laughs> no, I'm like I'm still like I approach every scenario kind of like wide eyed and with wonder of like what could happen and because I'm you know that's why I play Skyrim is for just to see what what uh, like exploring and now I'm just getting into the fact that Lydia could screw things up at any time and now my horse apparently can screw things up at any time and I don't know he was a he was a champ in that one that one horse. highlight. <laughs> oh, kills so much stuff. Oh yeah, I got I, I got to find a way to like lose the horse because I play he's, he's a better hero. Well. <laughs> well, sometimes it's kind of like you're moving through. You're like finally lining the shop. He's like, "Hi hey, guys, it's me." <laughs> 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 he's just like, like the shit." You're like, "What, Shadow Man? What are you doing?" Like, yeah, you're yeah. stealth. He's like, oh, I'm fying. <laughs> you sure you don't have a horker as a companion? Well, I've got, I've got right. that too. Yeah, that's yeah. a special pet. That sounds like my horker impression. Um, so I'll continue doing that. I've got to make a choice. Any any recommendations of what I go after next? I thought about either. Did you do Thieves do, Guild yet? I've not done Thieves Guild. I've done that. Yeah, I mean, That's yeah, fun. It's, it's really good. I haven't even finished um, the Brotherhood uh, quest line yet mm. um, because I got into the Thieves Guild and that was really pretty awesome. Um, I'm also so. starting starting to do heavy conjuration stuff, so I thought about doing the Mage's School as well. Yeah, that one's yeah. Uh, do it, but uh, I mean, okay. it, it'll be disappointing. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you put the, for the amount of time you put into it, it doesn't feel worth it, at least to me. Gotcha. No. Uh, or I could actually do some of the mainline quests because I've done only like three of them. <laughs> I basically, unlock the dragons and said, "See you later." <laughs> uh, yeah, those actually. I mean, I I I never do the main storyline in those games until like the very end. But actually, I I'm kind of going half and half. And they've, they're actually pretty cool, and they, they progress the story actually in a way that may be useful to you. So you may yeah. want to do Yeah, that. I know they're – yeah. Because, like, I played through – my first time playing the game, I played a lot without doing any of the story. So the dragons weren't even fucking unlocked in the game. Like, oh, shit. I was just like, yeah, this, this is cool. And then, oh, yeah, dragons can now show up at any point. And, yeah. God, they – Every time I would have to like kill somebody in the city, and I would get chased out of the city by the guards, and I can't fast travel because they're still chasing me. Every time a dragon shows up, like yeah. it's just like, yeah. uh, and it's awesome. Have you had have you had two dragons attack you at the same time yet? Not yet. No, no. It, it double doesn't dragon. Happen often. Oh, it sucks. Double dragon. Do thing. <laughs> you don't win that. You don't win those battles. Billy, you mean call him Billy Lee. Bill, yeah. <laughs> Um, what else have I been playing? Oh, so 
I real quick shout out. Ducktales is still awesome. Just con- confirming. It's I'm still really enjoying it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, so the two new games of the week. Blah, man, I'm making Aaron write a review of this uh, because he made me play it based off all of his Twitter chat. But on um, the 3DS eShop, there's a game called Steam World Dig. Uh, also in the running for worst title of a game this decade because I, I thought Valve made a Minecraft game. That was kind of my initial reaction. Um, it's it's basically a 2D steampunk uh, Terraria, but only the adventure side of things. Like you don't build anything, you just mine and collect collect items, kill things in the mine, and then before your lamp runs out, you have to run back up the top and sell your shit so you can get better equipment to dig deeper and find more shit. And it's addictive as hell. And it's, uh, the world's inhabited by steampunk robots and it's got a nice personality and just a really pleasant platforming find on the, the eShop and perfect for mobile, mobile stuff. But if that shows up on any other platforms, you should, you should all jump, jump all over it. I feel like there was maybe like a space mining game that was like that. Did you guys ever play that? <laughs> Might have been just um, an online only game. There was um There were, like you have like a little rover and you you dig and you get ores. I don't know, it's been a long time. Maybe five, I six could, years. I could be into space mining. Just in it, yeah, it, there was also a game on uh the indie Xbox indie um Yeah, channel. there's a lot of them. Like and that's what I thought this was. Like when I just saw the name Steam World Dig, I was like, Oh, one of those made the leap and but it's it's really really nicely done. It is, yeah. And it and it doesn't look it looks like it doesn't look like an indie platformer. It just looks like a solid two D uh, platforming game. So it's uh, man, that game came out of nowhere. Downloaded it like really late Sunday night and went to bed super late because of that. <laughs> um, that was dumb. But yeah, super addictive. Um, and then uh, last night I checked out the alpha version of Sir, You Are Being Hunted. Um, if you are a lady, mm. you'll be happy to know it is called Madam You Are Being Hunted. That's my favorite little touch nice. that they have in the menu system. You select whether you're a sir or a madam. Um, <laughs> so this is a procedurally gen- generated survival game. Um, the plot is sen- – they set up the plot really well, actually. Um, it just sounds like you're just an English gentleman that, for whatever reason, some device teleported you to this island. And it's a set of five islands that are randomly gen- generated, and you have to – seek out these parts of your of this device that can bring you back to your world. Um, but, of course, this world is inhabited by um, old-timey robot hunters that are hunting you down. Yep. And um, there's a lot of, you know, just collecting items for... you got to pay attention to your how hungry you are. You've got to... Uh, if you take damage, you can bleed. So you've got to have bandages ready to go. You don't really have any weapons to start, and you've just got to find everything in the world, and basically through stealth, setting traps, and I'm assuming you can eventually fight back with weapons, you've got to fend off and and get around these robots to find all of these missing parts to um, this device you're building to, to bring you back. Yeah. Um, the game, it's kind of questionable in that I think each island has eight devices, and there's so there's... 40 p- parts that you have to pick up. Uh, your inventory is handled like old school um, yeah. uh, Tetris inventory style, like Resident Evil. Um, so you can only carry a limited amount of stuff and they have to fit in your bag. Um, but every time you get back to the little hub where you drop off, drop off the, the items, you can save it there or you can save it when you're traveling in between islands. And it'll let you restart from wherever you last saved. So at first, I was kind of like, you'd think this would be like almost roguelike in that you want to start over, start fresh every time you die, but um, it would take a very long time to collect all 40 of these items. So, yeah. um, but the, so this is actually made by one of the writers from, or I know one of the writers from Rock, Paper, Shotgun is working on it. Yeah. Um, so it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of personality. The robots are, um, they're actually kind of hard to hear, but some of their lines are pretty funny. They're just, you know, they sound like old timey hunters, except they just happen to be robots. And, um, I don't know. I, I feel like it feels like a much more focused and objective focused day Z to me, like that type mm. of experience. That's cool. Are you, are you worried at all? Um, to me, like I saw it was up for, cause it's just alpha at this point, right? 
Yes. Yeah. So it's, so it was one of those games that I thought I was going to wait on until later on, um, because I played so many of the survival games when they're in alpha stages and they yeah. You play them for a while, they're cool, but then it's almost like, okay, what's next? Um, so I was, I was, how tight is it at this point? It, yeah, it, it seems like every, all oh, the cores there, it seemed fine. Okay. Like you could have, they tighten up the, tighten up the menus a little bit more and maybe give me a, a little bit more of a tutorial and then you could convince me it was a, a full released game. But, you know, looking at the stuff they have planned, like building out more variations to the robots and, um, that kind of thing. You can see what there's 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 still room to add stuff, but it seemed it seemed fine. I just wanted to check in on it. The, mm-hmm. Now now the the second problem you have when you check out the early release games is when do you go back? Do you yeah. start investing a lot of time into it? Well, it's kind of like I ran into this with Cube World and Mercenary Kings. It's just like I want to play the full release like nonstop. So how much time do I put into it now? Like, yeah, like I really enjoyed this game and I wanted to support it. That's kind of why I got behind the the early access. But um, um, yeah, but yeah, I'm kind of like, do I keep going and try to get good at it? There's or do I wait? So I don't know. I haven't. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Okay. Well, um, yeah, actually, kind of. Uh, I ran into the same problem with Don't Starve as well. So, <laughs> yeah. I think I think you picked that up after it was fully out. So, I don't know. It's, yeah, because well, uh, yeah, I got into that game at back in November when it had first come out, and I made that conscious decision because you and I. I mean, we've talked about that with all these games because there's there, there's a lot. It's a lot easier getting into an alpha and a beta now than it mm-hmm. ever was before. Mm-hmm. And with Don't Starve, I said, eh, it's time to stop. Um, and we'll come back into it because it was pretty relatively bare bones, but still, you know, pretty tight. But I mean, it's a almost completely different game now you know so it's just i'm always curious on some of those games um because some of them you don't want to overstay your welcome with yeah with the alpha because it just it kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth yeah uh, and you know in the back of your mind that you know they're, they're working through these things and whatnot but um still like with q world like i had to kind of cut myself off because i'm yep. like okay am i gonna put all this time into it and then i'm gonna lose all this progress or yeah. what's gonna yeah happen, so. that, that's the good thing on this I, you won't lose progress like yeah. Um, so it doesn't have that side to it. It's just a matter of, will I get sick of it before they add some like really cool feature that would have been cool had I not played it for 20 hours yeah, already. Yeah. So um, I think I will probably do another one or two sessions with it because there's a lot of the fundamentals I still don't understand. Like I don't know, I don't know how the, how you acquire weapons and if they can actually damage these robots. But I did like the fa- one thing I did like is the robots have robot dogs that will hunt you down. Oh, that's cool. That was kind of funny. Um, and then it is it's twenty bucks right now too. So yeah. uh, know what you're getting into. It, that's a little bit higher yeah. priced for some of the downloadable games, but uh, I felt pretty confident in that decision for me at least. Um, and then I, you know, I've been kind of curious or trying to think of how we want to cover these games because we haven't really the early access stuff. Do we want to stream yeah. it? Do we want to wait? Uh, right now, I'm kind of of the mind that as long as we present it, I'm not presenting it in a review form. Like this wasn't a game curious video. This I wasn't. This is just I'm gonna play it. You can watch the alpha version and judge and react for yourself. But I'm not gonna offer. I mean, I'll I'll probably do a write up of it, just a status of the game. But like, um, just know that it, it's actively in development right now. Now, have you have you noticed a trend in those games with the NDAs? Um, like, because some some companies are okay with you streaming, some are like, nah, please don't. Yeah. Um, I haven't I dug just, into I, the ones that haven't let us like uh, everything we've tried so far is letting you stream. So yeah, we'll see when yeah. we hit that wall with something else. But yeah, um, you know, I stayed away from Marvel Heroes when they had their NDA just for that reason. Because I mean, honestly, if it has the NDA, I kind of don't want to play it because I don't want to kind of I don't want to accidentally talk about it. Well, and that's that's kind of the that's kind of the, the thing. So I'm is, kind is of in, transparent. <laughs> well, the indie the indie developers are like, yeah, please, fucking play the fuck yeah. out of it. Like I remember the, the I, I emailed um, the team at Grinding Gear Games for Path of Exile. I was like, hey, I just you know I, I was looking for your NDA. It wasn't quite clear. Is it okay to stream? They were like, yeah, like please do. <laughs> we want that to happen. So it, it's it is different. It's almost like like you know with with Marvel. Like it's such a big. Get, I mean, it's a big name. They they have to almost do that because there's other kind of copyright stuff pulled into it. Um, but with some of these smaller games, I just I want to stream them. I'm like, ah, uh, you know, I don't want them to be mad. I don't want them to yell at me. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And then you email Nintendo and they kick you off the internet for good. Oh no! Then they try to they try to make any benefit off of your videos. Yeah, that is so stupid. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> and and uh, what, what what Final Fantasy actually is doing something like that as well, aren't they? Probably sounds about right. I think. Yeah. I wonder if that's just a you know just to throw out a, a labeling all Japanese developers statement. I just wonder if that's a that's, that might be a culture, <laughs> well, cultural cultural thing. Fish? I don't know. Are you being Phil <laughs> Fish right now? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm done with video game journalism. It's just not <laughs> worth it anymore. <laughs> um, also, I'll be back when Fez Two is done. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. What are you guys? What are you guys working on? What What streams you got coming up, Jason? What 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 games? I've just been just honestly playing games for my own sake. What? Like, like That's disconnecting crazy. myself you from selfish son of a bitch. Well, you know, I just. It's really kind of weird, like getting so used to playing games and talking at the same time. That I kind of needed to feel what it felt like to just to play a game. <laughs> so this is a social experiment. A little to feel like a normal person. <laughs> a little bit, yes, just to get a taste of the good life. Um, yeah, so you know, I've been, I've just been like, I jumped back into to Minecraft for the first time in what feels like a, maybe a month or two. And it felt weird because normally I would be talking and sort of explaining what I was doing, and it was just rather strange. And do you find yourself just talking to yourself? Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, so, sometimes. There are a few it, games where I'm just like, I'd be talking to myself. I, yeah, I'd be talking to myself anyway. Yeah. And so you know, I honestly like you know all the games I mentioned earlier. I pretty much just played those for my my personal enjoyment. You know, I'm not recording or streaming Saints Row, um, Torchlight. Like I said, I jumped into Oregon Trail was probably the only thing that I recorded myself playing, um, and I actually did play Timber and Stone just by myself, just to experience the game because it's still very much in in. I would consider it an alpha, but some people call it a beta because it is playable. I call um, it an Omega. To to a certain extent, but I just wanted to feel because I since that came out, I have just been playing that as a recording like session you know I've, I've recorded over 50 episodes and I don't really feel like I ever sat down just to experience the game so uh, I did that and I, I quite enjoyed it so um, yeah. I am working to see if I could possibly stream Timber and Stone with my current hardware setup so mm-hmm. you um, keep an eye out for that if that is successful I just haven't had any time really to test the waters yeah, let us know how that that turns out. Yeah, we opened up the the Twitch channel to your buddy Andy, which yep. was a huge mistake. So he's been fired, but good. hopefully you'll fare better. He is. Oh, did he Andy is, fuck up? He is. Yeah, no yeah. good whatsoever. God damn it, Andy. He's not in God. chat right now, so it's fine. Yeah. Damn it. I saw him. I think he is in chat. <laughs> oh shit! Shh. <laughs> <laughs> now he'll actually be back uh, Wednesday night. He's going to stream uh, the bureau. So we get a new game on there. So all nude <laughs> streaming. Here it comes. Uh, Ethan, what do you got going on, man? Um, so we're gonna fi- or I'm gonna finish up Gamescom stories uh, throughout the week. Um, got a review on the last page um, that will be coming out probably Friday. Um, the last page. The wait, shit. I, I, I'm not the looking. evil. <laughs> The last door, excuse me. Jesus <laughs> um, the last Ellen Page game. The last Ellen Page game. The last door, um, which is a point-and-click adventure game. I actually did cheap and dirty uh, about a few oh, cool. weeks back, but I'm I'm kind of excited about it. Um, that game just because a lot of good atmosphere and just I, I love point-and-click adventure games. Um, got a bro tabulous um, in yeah. the uh, sitting sitting back there. That's been I've been working on for a while. Any teases of what game, or you can you can keep that to yourself. Um. Well, well I mean, right now it's Fallout New Vegas. I've got okay. Fallout New Vegas one. Um, I wanted to get out of the way. Um, Are but, man piles involved? No, 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 no. This is okay. more. Um, <laughs> this is more heroic. Uh, okay. I would say less less man piles, but there. I mean, there's piles of men. I mean, there's there's definitely piles of men. Um, but all, but I I'm I'm happy to report that we have another character that has um, sprung forth from my my Saints Row four. Uh, playing um in, in john taekwondo uh, oh, nice. who, who is a uh 
who is just another uh, hero that I can add to my roster, which includes Brass Carlson, Tex Rexman, um, uh, Chloe Moonshine, uh, and uh, Chainsaw Murphy. I um I actually inadvertently created Mankini. Oh, um, did you? Nice. As my hero in Saints Row, so nice. Was it inadvertently, or did you did you kind of? No, it was only after the fact that I realized that it was a man running around in a well a bra. But so, yeah, <laughs> that's that's so strange because I just always have created myself. I usually do too. Just a I, very basic looking me in a I can't plain do that t-shirt in and Row. jeans. I've got to use dumb well, shit. That, I, I always have like just myself, just like the the legit, you know, one, you know, one suited Jason, and then I've got you know the crazy bonkers version that you know comes out to play every now and then. <laughs> well, I've just I, I've been I've been struggling with. Um, I just feel my characters needed a, a real solid martial artist with uh, superpowers. <laughs> John Taekwondo. Uh, and I kind of came out of that, so um, <laughs> and I absolutely lo- like I, I adore this character. It's like one of my favorite characters so far. Like I'm I'm having a good time with it because he's real muscular, real beautiful hair, solid mustache, <laughs> and, uh, and a neatly neatly pressed taekwondo uh, equipment, uh, okay. taekwondo uh, uniform, and then he also has his uh, footies on, a little taekwondo. Oh, footies. nice. So, so, it's, yeah. so it's you. I mean, I, I don't see why well, you're not just saying it's you. It is it, right. It, it, he's it, shy. It is. It kind of is. <laughs> um, I'm going to continue my Spelunky daily challenge streams and um, let me know what you guys think about my daily challenge video. Like I've been doing the, I've been doing those um, on Mondays, just basically the highlights, my deaths, my near escapes, and uh, my failures, um, kind of compiled into a week long highlight reel. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm trying to figure out if I want to keep doing the current version, which is, looks like it's about a 10 to 15 minute video, or if I go shorter and just like, just do the deaths or that sort of thing. So be curious what, uh, what your guys' feedback is on that. Um, and then, um, Skyrim will continue, uh, weekly on the weekends, um, as much as possible anyway, but I'm definitely not slowing down. I thought I would, honestly, after Saints Row came out, I was, I didn't think Skyrim would seem as appealing, but um, I don't know. Uh, Shadow Mayor just breathed some energy into me or something. <laughs> uh, and I'm also going to try keep trying to see through Earthbound, which I'll be playing after the show tonight. Um, and then we've got I've got a t- I've got three Game Curiouses queued up um, from games I've streamed recently, and I try to keep those streams up on Monday nights uh, where I play something new. Uh, but so I got to get those write ups out of the way. But I don't know. I kind of hit this moment this week, Ethan, where We've got plenty of game coverage coming, but but getting back to some of our more creative um, editorials needs to happen in the near future. So um, yeah. hopefully, I'll, like I'm also planning the the 24 hour marathon that'll be coming up in either late October or early November. So we'll give you guys news on that. But so once that's out of the way and I clean up some stuff on our videos, hopefully you'll actually see some of our creative work return. But in the end, I'm hoping. Uh, I know Cole's out there working on some stuff, and so is Gifford. Um, hopefully, those guys will fill in the gaps there with some some editorials. Um, all right, game pitches. You guys wrote like paragraphs, so I'm kind of intimidated. <laughs> um, either one. Who wants to go first? Who's most excited? Ethan, go. Okay. I actually, I actually watched you write these notes in, and I was very entertained. <laughs> well, so um, this Saints playing Saints Row Four. This is gonna go back to Saints Row Four. Um, I felt less guilty about the just rampant destruction that I've caused because you're in a you know you're in a simulation, so these aren't real people. Um, <laughs> and but I but I thought um, and this actually comes from a joke uh, that oh fuck who told this joke? A comedian told a joke. Dane Cook. Was it? I mean, he stole I, that joke. It, was it about you know I want to make a game where you're the ambulance drivers that take care of all the people that you've injured? I don't know, but I have heard that. No, yeah. that. Me? Who said that? That someone said that joke. I just heard it recently too. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure yeah. it's, it's, it's like real, million. confirmed. It, essentially, in this whole idea of collateral damage, because when we play games, we kill 
a lot of bad guys, but I mean, come on. Like seriously, we, there's species that go extinct because of our our just careless, you know, misfires and that kind of stuff. Like sharks. Is it Mike Birbiglia? It may have been Mike Birbiglia. I think it was him. That sounds good. That we'll there. just go with that. If it wasn't you, Mike, uh, sorry. Uh, and thanks for watching. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I just I like this idea of like playing a game and just it, it's. Completely normal. You're going, you're shooting like you're a hero. I was like, yeah. But then at the end of your like quest or whatever, someone comes up to you be like, um, oh, excuse me. Hey, hey. Oh, good job what you did. I'm really glad you got rid of those aliens. But someone's going to have to pay for this. And it's not us because <laughs> like, you killed everyone that has anything to do with making money here. And so this whole idea of like balancing like – so then you, you play the game and you have to be cautious about your destruction. What is or this, the Watchmen game? Huh? It's kind of like the Watchmen game. Like, oh, they had to push all the superheroes aside because they were causing too yeah. much destruction. I mean, I mean, yeah, something along those lines. It's just this idea that, like, like being a hero, like, sometimes you have to do, like, kind of bad stuff to, like, get to the end of, like, to, 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 to solve a problem, solve a crime. Sometimes you got to get, you got to get nerdy. You gotta get bad, and you gotta be as bad as bad guys. But like at the end of the day, in real life, like someone's gonna hold you accountable for that shit. And so I just want there to be this real, just real proper kind of nerdy guy who who keeps track of. I mean, he's like your sidekick, <laughs> and throughout the game, he's like, oh, um, now I see that you're gonna select your rocket launcher. May I suggest you go for a more accurate rifle? And avoid the catastrophe that's going to come from this because you can't afford it, sir. You can't afford it. And then this other balance of like you're doing all these missions to make money, but then you're spending all this money from these missions to pay for all the damage that you cause. And this is just like this cycle that like never ends, and it's just real frustrating. That would be um, a really actually an awesome end of the mission screen, like kind of like the crash mode from Burnout, where. Yeah. Like, you finish it, it's like, yeah, great, way to go. And then it just scans over the city and racks up all the dollar signs of all the <laughs> all the shit you've done wrong. And also, sorry to sound like the world's worst MMO party system, and that one guy gets to be the superhero. You, And then you have the choice of you can do either the lawyer class or the accountant <laughs> class. And you oh, guys my sit- God. <laughs> or the cleanup crew. Yes. Because... Verdian had sent me a link to um, this game Vis- called Visceral Cleanup Crew, or whatever. Yeah, and like to combine all that stuff into it, like and it like like and if you if we take off what we talked about Dota two, where you're really pissed at your teammates for not doing the right things, like if you're the cleanup guy and you're following some jackass who just takes a flamethrower to everything, you're gonna be a little bit pissed. And as a lawyer, you're gonna be like, look, this is gonna cost you, and you, you still haven't paid me for the last couple times. Like I could just. It would be hilarious. It would it would suck for everybody but the hero, um, but if you could find that balance of, of caution and just like throwing co- like and just saying fuck it, um, <laughs> well, what, I, I think it'd be hilarious. Why'd you let him go? Because I literally could not afford to stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, guys, I know I know that bad guy is gonna just basically like ruin the world, but like I'm <gasps> in so much fucking debt. And another the last cl- time I tried, you know. And another class to com- to complete your party is the lobbyist. <laughs> who can help get some of the laws changed to make some of your decisions a little bit easier? Oh shit! Or the crooked cop that you like pay yeah. a little bit of money? Like, oh look the other way! Like, oh look what way? No, Wink. my I blew this up with a rocket launcher. Or not. the annoying, the annoying goody two shoes cop that's like, no, that's against the law. I'm sorry, <laughs> you're gonna have to pay for that. Well, then that's when you pull out your gun and take care of business. <laughs> you should. Think but then also, but the other aspect of this is you also have to face the families. <laughs> of anyone that you kill as well, and so they'll have these really dramatic cutscenes where you're like, da, 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 mission accomplished, and then wah, 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 the family comes up. This is little Gina. Uh, her father was that man with the bandana whose head you cut off. Um, she knows her daddy was a bad guy, but he did his best. So she just she just has something to say to you, and then this little girl comes up and just pulls out this little you know this little piece of paper with I, I wrote this letter to you why'd you take my daddy and just, <laughs> but that happens with every bad guy you kill <laughs> or any innocent person you kill so like you literally could beat a mission and then have like 150,000 NPCs line up to like like wag their finger at you I, know, I always my only son. I always joke about on any of the 
live streaming any RPGs that they always we always start with kind of inventory management. But this is if you were to play this game, you would you would take your break and then you'd have to resume like the mission cleanup for the next forty five minutes, the mission guilt trip. Um, and then uh, Jordan Jordan also threw out the idea of um, the game where you actually <laughs> manage the construction company that actually has to uh, <laughs> who's hired. Hired to destroy. What is? Wait, I read it wrong. What if you were a construction company who hired heroes to purposely destroy a lot? Oh, that makes sense. Like you, yeah. like oh, blast core. <laughs> almost, almost like, uh, like rampage. Yeah, oh, yeah. A little bit That'd maybe. Be, no, I was actually thinking like, what if you were the construction company that had to clean up? After sure, no, no, no. I, I get that, but his idea is kind of reminds me yeah. of you know, rampage and Angry Birds. Kind of see how quickly you can do it and how efficiently, and you get money based off that. Yeah. <laughs> that, your game could be endless, that though. Even though. honestly, like just they're, infinite they're, expansions, they're infinite the infinite paperwork DLC. <laughs> Three people will buy it. Yeah, the man, uh, manslaughter <laughs> manslaughter DLC. You didn't mean to; it wasn't intentional. But you're gonna go to jail. You're gonna have to serve some time for what you did. <laughs> uh, Jason, you want to take us home? Oh, I can do that. So I, it, last time we were on, I was kind of thinking of an artsy way of, you know, coming up with a game that would be fun to play, but also visually fun to look at. And I was kind of thinking, you know, I, I do enjoy space. I do enjoy space games. I know I'm not the only one. And I kind of thought about a game where you actually create and develop and nurture a galaxy from from scratch. So you have you know, the ability to uh, have, you know, a sun or suns in your galaxy and various planets and that's all based on you know physics and i want to say there's maybe a game that's already like this or at least a simulator there's never been there's, quite a game though there's solar a, solar 2 solar 2 in universe sandbox yeah but i mean how were they really i guess they were probably in that in depth i i i seem to recall universal sandbox but my idea is once you get those things going, then you put your galaxy up against somebody else's galaxy and have a galaxy fight. Oh, shit. Galaxy Pokemon. Pretty much. And so you get them. <laughs> so, you know, it's almost like... I choose you, Saturn. <laughs> so, you know, you basically get your, your galaxy so close together that eventually they, you know, get absorbed into one another. And depending on how nice your, you know, sun is and planets are and how much gravity and power they have, one will eventually come out the the, the winner. I give. I think it'd be really interesting. Aside from like like literal literal physical conflict between galaxies, like planets and stars smashing in together. Like if you're depending on how old your galaxy is, like the actual life being able to defend it. Because that was um, and basically creating Mass Effect is really what I'm asking. But from the just the universal the global, level. yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. The, the, the universal conflict um, that would be kind of because but, you know, but visually that would just be you know kind of almost beautiful to look at where they're just mm-hmm. sort of like you know coming across and then you've got stats and then you know I don't know I, I I've been very artsy with my and then you pull out lately. one more level and it's all been taking place in this marble in a bag of this giant alien yep <laughs> pretty much and then then we have Men in Black Four and that then was you zoom out. Black- they, then you zoom out further, and it's all in a snow globe, and you have Saint elsewhere. <laughs> oh, shit. And then you pull, and then Mario back wakes up. And was that the oldest Kane? reference ever? Yeah, Wait, Citizen Kane. Yeah, Citizen <laughs> oh, Kane. Yeah. There was a snow globe. <laughs> Any movie that is, maybe Snow Globe the movie, the game. <laughs> Let's all, call it. Pull all out your games happen. Yeah, right. Um, call, I'm into that, but I think that there should be this this idea of chance that like. So so you, you create this this uh, solar system, and let's say life does develop, if we go to that level, but you just develop shitty ass life, and and, 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 you, and so you're like I'm gonna get you friend who I'm competing against, and then you, like your life forms are like oh shit we're gonna pollute everything, and you just explode right before you even <laughs> like you're like God you, damn it humanity wait. you did it again. <laughs> I mean yeah you you technically did everything right from the the physical aspect of creating the perfect galaxy to um to harbor life but really at that point it's kind of a, a dice roll to whether yeah. you've got just completely inept <laughs> uh artificial life or you've got you know heroic 
uh, model citizens. But or you could send your <laughs> shitty citizens to their planets. You know what I mean? Like send like like who's your worst like. This is here's Dave. Dave's a dick. Dave fucks everything up. Let's send him over to that galaxy, and then he goes over there. And so maybe the whole idea is not only are you fighting, but you're trying to send Dave back and forth, and like no one can get rid of him because he's just always stay. He lingers. Dave lingers so long. The party's been over for half an hour. Dave, Dave. the intergalactic diplomat. <laughs> Dave, why don't you go? Dave, go home. Dave, we're all going to bed. Dave. <laughs> what, okay, what if you no more could? Uh, what if you could go repo other people's galaxies? Oh shit! Steal some moons? Yeah, they're just like, okay, you're you're a little bit in galaxy debt here. We're gonna take, you know, Jupiter. Have fun with that. <laughs> then it then it integrates with uh, Ethan's cleanup game. Pretty much. <laughs> Can you call it galaxy debt? I think you should call. That's what you should call the game. That actually that sounds would, pretty tight. That, that sounds would, pretty awesome. That would work. That would work. I love I, I plain plain solar too and I it is true like those are very peaceful games and those are really good games oh, yeah. like to just like really therapeutic get, and you end up playing them for like a really long time just because your brain just like kind of goes into you know and you don't have to smoke weed but if you do that's fine like that's what I'm saying like you don't have to I'm not saying you should I'm just saying if you do it it works perfectly fine I've not done it but I'm just saying <laughs> well, you make up for it in drinking don't worry yeah I was gonna say. <laughs> I think that's going to do it for the action report for this week. Um, Ethan, Jason, thanks for hanging out. No problem. Thank you. Chat, thanks for participating. And we will be back with another episode next week. We'll see you.